All righty. So we are live now with, with the breakout sessions. Uh, you have the opportunity to join three different breakout sessions. This one is once again about Microsoft connectivity. So I guess you have followed the great presentation from Gerard, where he has been talking about the Microsoft network, what capacity they have added in 2020, and which different opportunities Microsoft gives to their clients in order to connect towards the Microsoft network. Within this breakout session, we would like to present you one very specific use case, which we have implemented early this year. And the use case is about improving the latency towards Microsoft 365. And in this case, it is towards, or it is for a German-based customer, uh, Hochtief. And this presentation will be a joint talk. It will be a joint talk between Stefan Klaassen, who is a senior technical consultant at Ecotel Communication uh, AG. Um, Stefan has been over seven years with Ecotel, where he is the interface between the customer, the sales team, and the engineering team of Ecotel. Um, he's working on all different type of projects, but I think his most favorites are the ones which are complex and are individually tailored solutions. Um, so Stefan will be starting with the presentation and uh, I will then pick up in the middle of it. I'm Daniel. For the ones who don't know me yet, I have been working with DKIX for close to 10 years now, six of which in our network operations and engineering team, where I've been building our global DKIX network and the last four years in technical sales. Um, so yeah, that much for the introduction. The agenda, the menu, which we have prepared for you today, looks as following. We want to start with a very brief and quick introduction of Ecotel Communication, who we have partnered with in that case, in order to continue also with a short and brief introduction of Hooktief, who is the customer for whom we have implemented uh, the, the, the Azure Peering Service, which Gerald also mentioned in the previous presentation. So when we talk about the Azure Peering Service, we want to give you a brief overview, a quick overview of the connectivity, which Hochtief so far had and, and where the challenges are and, and how we enabled it. And then we want to continue what was needed, how was the process, how did we actually implement it in order to then come to the end with the actual results. Yeah? How did it perform? How did it improve? And um, yeah come up with a summary. So for now, let me now hand over to Stefan, um, who will start with the introduction of Ecotel. Stefan, thank you so much for being with us today. And the floor is yours. First of all, Daniel, thank you very much for the warm introduction. Um, my name is Stefan Klaassen. I am a technical, technical consultant at Ecotel Communication AG. Um, now I don't see the screen. The screen is coming. Okay, I think we you cannot see all the figures, but let me uh, try to, to explain you, give you a brief introduction about Ecotel. Ecotel was founded in uh, 1998 after the German telecommunication market was uh, opened for deregulation. And um, from the time being, we, we, we've been uh, developing from a, let me say, pre-selection provider to a nowadays full the service provider around all data and voice products. So in just some milestones, we've acquired uh, the company Nakama Artiskeli Business in 2006-2007. So we've purchased our own data center, which is located in Frankfurt am Main, Hanauer Landstraße, very close to the DKIX. So we are direct neighbors. And um, in 2016, we have another big milestone. We, um, we've we been uh, full... Um, service provider of voice network operator. So we can provide you with all IP services um, and all data services around like, like zip trunks or uh, cloud PBX software uh, services or VPN connection and data center services as well. Um, yeah, we are around 300 uh, employees and we have around uh, 100 million turnover in 2020. Our daughter companies are Nakama, who is mainly focused on new media services, IP, radio streaming. Easybell is a daughter company as well. They are uh, dealing with um, mainly B2C and Soho customers. And MVN Echo uh, is um, dealing with, uh, is, a soft, is a managed service provider for um, mobile operators. Um, yeah, 
I think we can um, go to the next slide and show you some of our reference customers. You can see there are a lot of big customers as well. Also the customer we are talking about today, Hochtief. But um, we have also uh, our, let me say, sweet spot in the medium-sized uh, companies as well. OK, now we can see a schematic drawing of uh, MPLS-based VPN. This is a service we are talking, this is a base we have also um, installed or we are providing for uh, the customer Hochtief. Um, so we talk about a private network. You can see our infrastructure here. We see our headquarters is based in Düsseldorf and we also have the data center and some technical departments in Frankfurt. So these two cities are our main locations where we have also points of presence and uh, interconnections to many, many uh, carriers and of course also to the DKICs. And um, yeah, we can connect all the locations from the customer with different technologies, mainly based on fiber ethernet connections. So we can um, add some VPN services, internet connectivity service, and of course also voice services on top. So this is a schematic drawing. We can see later on the uh, drawing for Hochtief. So um, yeah, that was a brief overview about the Ecotel Communication AG, and now we would like to take a look also into Hochtief. I think most of the uh, German um, people, they know Hochtief, but maybe not every, everybody uh, in this um, session right now knows Hochtief. Hochtief is, was founded in uh, Germany, 1873, and is uh, the headquarter is in Essen. So it's a German-based company. Um, Hochtief has uh, more than 50,000 employees worldwide and more than 22 billion revenue in 2017. Um, you can see different logos over here. The main markets are Northern America, uh, the European market, and also Asia Pacific, Australia. We, with Ecotel, we are providing the core network for the European part and the subsidiaries. Okay, now you can see some um, figures what we are talking about. So we have uh, connected more than 30 office locations, mainly with, with Ethernet, uh, the metric connections, fiber connections, and more than 70 construction sites, which are, of course, very dynamic and uh, not so easy to um, uh, develop because there is no infrastructure available. Um, the main focus is uh, Germany, but we also um, provide connections to um, over Europe. Yeah, the main product is carrier Ethernet up to 10 gig uh, and also a combination of DSL and mobile LTE routers we are using. Uh, on top, we have a VPN concentrator, uh, which is in our data center in Frankfurt for the dial-in uh, for mobile users and also the side-to-side um, yeah, -side VPN connections. So we are, we are providing the MPLS VPN for all internal services, some um, other data center access, and of course, an aggregated internet breakout for more than 3,000 um, Hochtief employees for their day-to-day -day operations. Um, Hochtief was using Microsoft services, also uh, especially Microsoft 365 before or already in 2019. So, um, they have introduced the products already, let me say, very early and uh, focusing on the services teams, OneNote, Exchange Online. Um, they are still implementing additional services like OneDrive, Stream, Forms, and Power Apps. Um, and let me say the previous connection was not um, powerful enough to um, yeah, have the best uh, user experience uh, and um, because the previous connection was based on pure public internet, direct connect, uh, not no direct connection. So um, the customer was requiring from us to have to, to improve this connection, to maybe have to add some, some direct connection to the public services from Microsoft, which was not so easy at that time. And um, yeah, so we, we are talking about the, the DKICs and together with Hortiv, with the CIO, try to, um, trying to find a solution how to improve the um, connection performance to the public services uh, from Microsoft 365. So maybe at this 
stage, I will hand over to, to Daniel and he will explain how we did it in detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Stefan, for, for the very nice introduction for the overview of Ecotel and Ruchtif. And now we come into a bit more a technical overview now. So uh, we want to look onto the Ruchtif corporate network, how the connectivity looked like, and how we implemented the Azure Peering service um, for that network. So on the bottom left, we do see the Hochtief corporate network as it is provided by Ecotel, by the Ethernet VPN product of Ecotel. We do see that there is the connection for the headquarter office in, in Essen, Germany. There are also four on-prem data centers which are spread across Germany. But then we also see that there are over 30 branch sites and 17, uh, 70 construction sites, and they are all aggregated by the Ecotel MPLS or Ethernet VPN product. As Stefan already mentioned, on the top left, we do also see that we have home office users, especially if we look back uh, in the last one and a half years uh, with a lot of people moving into the home office because of Corona that was heavily used. And then, of course, overall, because Hochtiv is a construction company, they also have a huge mobile workforce um, and they all connect over site to site VPN also into the corporate network of Hochtiv. In addition to that, we see also that there are international locations. So these are Hochtief owned or perhaps locations which are under a joint venture of Hochtief and the local uh, partner, basically. And um, some of these locations, they also need to access the German on-prem data centers in order to reach the services. So all of that VPN aggregation is also provided by Ecotel. So now we have heard that Hochtief did introduce Microsoft 365 based applications like Microsoft Teams and, and, and Outlook Online and, and SharePoint and OneDrive, et cetera, et cetera. And we have also heard that the connectivity was not um, perfect yeah? and, and we wanted to improve them. And uh, one of the challenge uh, or one of the um, very important notice to, to understand in that setup is that the internet breakout was not directly done by Ecotel, but Ecotel was interconnecting all of the Hoftief corporate network sites and they were then giving the connectivity to a third party managed service provider. This third party managed service provider was there for, um, for historic reasons and he's taking a lot of the security services, taking care of a lot of the security services and features within Hochtief. So that is firewalling, intrusion prevention systems, data loss prevention, providing a secure web gateway and a proxy server, et cetera, et cetera. So that is all done by a third party managed service provider where Ecotel is aggregating all the sites too. And then also the internet breakout yeah, is provided by that third party in order to then reach towards Microsoft 365. Um, network address translation yeah, from the private IP range within the Ecotel Ethernet VPN into the public internet is also done by that third party and they are routing Hochtief owned public IP space under the ASN. And the existing internet breakout was not optimized for Microsoft connectivity as it was just relying on internet, which is um, best effort and best endeavor routing and it does not come with an SLA. Now that Hochtief migrated a lot of the employees onto these Microsoft 365 applications, they started the evaluation together with Ecotel. At, at some point, Ecotel reached out to DKIX because they heard about this new Azure peering service, which we developed with Microsoft. So we had a couple of technical sessions and um, overall, I think the decision was done very quickly that Hochtief said, yeah, let's try it out. Let's see how it does. And um, this is where we then, yeah, implemented the Azure Peering Service. The Azure Peering Service pr is providing this dedicated layer to connect over the DKIX fabric in Frankfurt, which is then resulting in optimal and, and fast network connection to the closest Microsoft edge point of presence. It's encapsulated, it's secured, it's DDoS free, and it is reducing the latency. The connection itself was implemented on an existing firewall cluster, which was already part of the Hochtief corporate network and which was also co-located in Frankfurt. So what was needed? What was needed in order to bring this online, in order to get this implemented? And I think also more important, what are the results? How does it compare to the previous connectivity? Were there actually improvements? If yes, how much? And uh, this is what we're gonna look into next. So what was needed to get this implemented? First of all, Gerald already mentioned that on his or within his presentation earlier today. Um, first of all, with any software as a service product, 
Microsoft is delivering these services on a global scale on top of their own content delivery network and on top of their own data center infrastructure. So as we just saw, that means that connectivity is done via the public internet and because of that, BGP and routing is involved. So when we look into the Azure Peering Service, it is based on BGP routing. And here, it also needs to be based on public IP and ASN resources because no private ASNs and no private IP prefixes are allowed. Further, it needs to, or it, it, it is important to know that these resources, when I allocate them from my regional internet registry, that they need to be set up properly because VKIX as well as Microsoft, they both perform internet or IIR, internet routing registry validation. So in, we, we are validating and checking if prefix announcements, which, which are sent by a customer, are really valid and if they are the valid origin of a specific prefix in order to prevent BGP hijacks. So as I mentioned earlier briefly, Ecotel is just providing the connectivity, but all the internet breakup was at that third party provider. So there was purely private IP space within the Ecotel MPLS or within the Hoofteef corporate network. So what Ecotel did in order to get this started, Ecotel therefore allocated a new ASN for Hoofteef within RIPE or with RIPE, within the RIPE database. And they have further provided Hooktief with a dedicated slash 24 public IP space, which would later be used as a net pool, network address, and address translation pool, and would then be announced towards Microsoft on that Azure peering service. So on the right, we see a very quick uh, yeah, snapshot of, of what has been implemented or what has been actually registered with the RIPE database. So we see the AS, or the outnum object or the AS object, as well as a proper route object. The BGP routing itself, as well as the network ad uh, address translation was implemented on the existing firewall cluster, which I mentioned earlier. The firewall cluster was already sitting in a data center in Frankfurt in the Ecotel data center. Um, and it was already part of that MPLS VPN and it was also managed by Ecotel. So we had perfect preconditions and it was decided to use that firewall cluster and to get a dedicated access port at the DKIX Frankfurt fabric, um, which has been allocated. And then we have simply ordered a dedicated cross connect in order to connect the firewall cluster all the way to the DKIX fabric. From a technical point of view, the implementation is very, very similar, the Azure Peering Service implementation to what we usually know as peering on the DKIX fabric. Um, as the peering LAN. So with Azure Peering Service, there are there is a dedicated layer two infrastructure within DECX, a dedicated logical encapsulated infrastructure within the DECX fabric. And um, on top of that, we, we have connected two BGP route reflectors, similar to like our standard route servers, but it comes with some different configuration. So uh, the BGP sessions from the firewall clusters, they are terminated on the two BGP route reflectors, which are managed by DKIX and where Microsoft is already announcing the full AS875 prefix set like they would do on the internet. Um, from a technical point of view, what does it, or what is different uh, in comparison to the normal peering LAN at DKIX? Uh, the difference is that the data as well as the control plane within DKIX uh, only allows a one-to-many communication. Yeah? So everyone is allowed to talk to Microsoft, but um, the different customers who utilize the Azure Peering Service over DKIX, they cannot communicate between each other. Yeah? So once the BGP routing and the BGP sessions were implemented, once the prefixes were um, advertised towards Microsoft, etc., once we did some failover testings, and uh, once we concluded that, that it is fine and, and ready to go, uh, there is also that option to register a telemetry package within the Microsoft Azure portal, within the Microsoft Azure subscription. And this is also what Hochtief did. So you can register your prefix, your IP prefix, where your users are nutted into, and Microsoft will start to measure some uh, metrics towards that prefix from their point of view, like latency and tops and packet loss and, and all of that stuff. So this is what uh, Hochtief also implemented. And then within the Azure portal, you can set uh, some alarming. Yeah? So if, for example, the latency, if you have defined for a specific latency value, if the latency goes above that value, you can then 
uh, automatically send alerting via email or SMS or push notifications, etc. So the usual Azure alerting options uh, towards the network team and uh, to, to, yeah, to make sure that they are aware that there is some change impacting the Microsoft connectivity. So this is how it was implemented. Now is the question, how does it compare? How does it really compare? Or how is really the user experience and especially also the latency comparing to what Buchtif was using previously versus on, on that dedicated path towards Microsoft? Um, and this is what, what I quickly want to present to you now. So in order to track the results and, and, and see the impact of this Azure peering service, Hochtief did implement a latency monitoring within the corporate network at a couple of different sites yeah, to see within that MPLS construct from different sites, how is um, the latency towards different Microsoft targets. Yeah? So we took uh, different IP destinations and URLs provided by Microsoft out of the documentation, and we targeted these from that latency measurement system. And all the results, they were stored every 10 minutes into a database so that we could analyze them later on. So what we brought here today to just give you some examples of that measurement set um, are the results from, from Hurti, from the corporate network, to, towards, for example, outlook.office.com, as well as teams.microsoft.com, which are the corresponding endpoints. Um, the table on the right shows that the average value has been taken over a set of 100 uh, measurements. And as we can see in the table, for, uh, we have uh, measurements for the VPN users, for the headquarter office, and one of their four on-prem data centers. And if we look into how the latency was before, for example, from the headquarter office in SM, we were talking about the latency of 47 47 milliseconds towards outlook.office.com and 53 milliseconds towards teams.microsoft.com. And after we implemented the shortcut, the latency dramatically decreased. So from 47, we ended up with six milliseconds and from 53, we ended up with five milliseconds. And um, yeah, similar results were achieved based uh, on, on different locations. Yeah, But overall, we, we saw that the latency as well as the time to live or the, the, the different hops and the paths in order to reach that Microsoft endpoint, endpoint have um, drastically improved. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to, to make a quick summary, Ecotel, who was already um, providing the MPLS service for Hurti for the customer together with DKIX, have successfully implemented the Azure peering service into the corporate network just within a couple of weeks. Because once the concept was understood, uh, getting it implemented was, was just really a matter of time of getting the configurations ready, the connection to the DKIX fabric to create a dedicated one. And, 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 and uh, yeah, it was done pretty, pretty quickly, actually. Um, the previous suboptimal routing towards Microsoft um, 365 or any software as a service applications was now replaced by that simple, direct, and dedicated connection which massively increased the performance and also the user experience. So we would have never thought that we would be able to achieve a reduction in latency for Hurtif, for example, for the headquarter, which was previously at 53 milliseconds, all the way down to five milliseconds. So that was really a nice achievement. And um, yeah, and that also concludes the presentation. Um, we now have five more minutes where you can ask us questions if you want. So if you are in the talk tool on the right side, you will see the Slido chat window. Feel free to put in your questions and they will be forwarded to Stefan and myself. Yeah, thanks. Are there any questions? So we have five minutes. I will monitor the chat. And um, yeah, if there pops something up, let us know. If not, we, we have the breaks where both of us will be around or also, also later our digital social uh, where you can reach out to us as well. Yes, Daniel, I would like to, to add on top that the customer was so happy with the increased performance. So he directly after we implemented the service was um, uh, he, he allowed to um, uh, to extend the existing um, success story we already had with the Microsoft Azure peering service. So uh, right now the customer is still very happy 
um, and we also um, yeah upgraded the um, uplink to the Microsoft 365 connectivity because of the increasing demand. Uh, so I can just recommend this service to everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Stefan. It is really nice to see that, that customers in the end are happy, that they like the product, and especially in, in, in that contrast, that uh, result, I would have never, never thought that um, mm -hmm. yeah, we would be able to achieve such an uh, yeah, improvement, which is great for Hochtief and, and, and uh, their team. Yeah. There was one question, how do you provide redundancy at the central VPN connector? Yeah, of course, we do provide uh, uh, hardware uh, redundance in here. So mm -hmm. there's a redundance cluster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for answering that question, Stefan. Um, so mm -hmm. in my picture, it was simplified. <laughs> yes. There was, of course, mm -hmm. just one dot, but um, overall, there, there is a firewall cluster. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do we have any further questions? Let me just quickly see into the chat. Okay, I don't think there, there are any more questions. Um, from a program point of view, continuing in the tech meeting, uh, we will now be doing a 15 minutes break, if I do see that correctly. So it will be a 15 minutes match breaking, match making break. Yeah? So, no idea what that is, but I think Andreas <laughs> will explain that to us. And there okay, is a question. So there is a question. Does this also use IPv6? I only heard I, uh, about IPv4. If not, why not? A very valid question. So um, one of our very first questions as well, when we started our discussions with Microsoft, as of today, Microsoft <laughs> is only providing support for IPv4 on the Azure Peering Service. But IPv6 support, of course, is on the roadmap. It's a pity that it was not initially rolled out together, but this is um, yeah, how it was rolled out. So uh, as soon as Microsoft is ready to go, uh, I think getting this implemented on the DKIC side is pretty straightforward. But once there is support from the Microsoft end, of course, customers with IPv6 only, can utilize the Azure Peering Service as well. Uh, currently, I don't have any specific timeline for that, but uh, if you are really interested in that, feel free to drop us a line and we can keep you posted. There were two more questions. Um, mm -hmm. Are there more locations besides Frankfurt in a need? Daniel? Oh yeah, a very, very good question. Did I prepare a backup slide with a map? No, I did not. Yes. Um, there are definitely more locations. So we have initially implemented this in DKIX in Frankfurt, but we have already enabled our location and our fabric in New York, as well as Dallas, as well as Madrid and Marseille. We are currently working on onboarding that service for our fabric in Dubai uh, and Mumbai, as well as Chicago and um, in Singapore. Yeah? So we, we try to, to condense that or to, to spread that service over all of our fabrics. But as of today, Frankfurt, Madrid, Marseille, New York, Chicago, and Dubai, Mumbai, Singapore, and um, if I forgot something, are currently being onboarded. Maybe one final question. Is there a guide for someone to replicate this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So we do have uh, some material which was produced white papers, right. so. and white papers. Yeah, exactly. So we have a five page white paper, which um, yeah gives you like an exact executive summary and, and then a brief overview. And then we have also a pretty deep technical step by step white paper, which has about 24 pages, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which goes then into each and every step, what the pre uh, requirements are and, and, and what you have then also perhaps to do within the Microsoft Azure portal. Um, and I think there are even webinars, additional webinars, um, which should be available at the DKX website, if I am not mistaken. If not, feel free to send us an email and, and I'm happy to send you guys like a consolidated package of all the information which we have for that. Okay, let's see. 
Do we have any further questions? But our time is up. Mm -hmm. All righty. I think indeed our time is up. So then I would give back to the Regie team here at DKICS in Frankfurt to um, yeah, please take over and guide us to the 15 minutes break. Thanks again for joining the session. And um, yeah, have fun and enjoy the rest of the DKICS tech meeting. Thank you. Bye bye.